Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we have now entered day 113 of the ongoing war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. And uh, today, we're starting to receive additional reports from uh, the uh, Ukrainian state that uh, indicates just the kind of casualties uh, that are uh, being sustained by the Ukrainian uh, army, uh, armed forces, uh, in this uh, continuing conflict. So some reports indicate that up to uh, a thousand uh, Ukrainian casualties per day are being inflicted on the Ukrainian armed forces by the uh, Russian uh, armed forces. Now, obviously, this is not a thousand uh, killed in action per day, but total uh, casualties uh, the number of uh, killed in action uh, per day could be as high as uh, 200 per day now, over, uh, as that has increased over the uh, the last week uh, as the intensity of the Russian uh, operation continues. So again, uh, Ukrainian casualty uh, figures by the Ukrainian uh, government, uh, s some statements indicate that Again, those casualties are up to a thousand casualties per day. Uh, we don't really, again, have any official estimates uh, from the uh, the Russian side of the equation. Uh, however, uh, given the the type of uh, tactics that are being utilized by the Russian forces, and I've talked about this before, how these uh, how the Russian strategy and, and battlefield tactics uh, have changed, uh, with the the Russians using a lot more uh, ranged fire systems, ma na namely artillery, uh, long range. Uh, rocketry and uh, tactical air assets to include both helicopter gunships and uh, ground attack aircraft as well. Uh, so with the Russians having more of that and uh, generating the uh, the preponderance of the firepower that is that is uh, hitting Ukrainian forces, then inherently the Ukrainians are going to have a higher casualty rate unless we start to see a, a higher uptick in Russian maneuver operations, which then could lead uh, to the uh, the higher Russian casualty rate, as we uh, observed early uh, in the conflict. But the uh, the paradigm has changed a little bit on the ground, and uh, we continue to see that uh, pressure strategy by Russian forces, high intensity artillery attacks, uh, basically a nonstop along, um, namely the uh, the eastern front, uh, extending south of Kharkov down towards. Uh, the, the entire line uh, towards uh, towards Donetsk. Uh, further information indicates that uh, uh, there has been additional Russian cruise missile strikes uh, within the uh, Lviv uh, region over the past 24 hours. Uh, we suspect that uh, Russian cruise missiles have uh, gone after weapons uh, depots. Uh, uh, namely, the uh, the possible uh, deployment of uh, Western reinforcements in terms of, of uh, uh, weapon systems, uh, heavy weapon systems, and uh, ammunition that is being brought into the country. So, uh, we do know that there was a recent, uh, within the last 24 hours, Russian strikes in Western Ukraine, and additional uh, Russian strikes uh, to the uh, northwest of Mikolaev as well. So uh, we can we can expect that the Russians will continue uh, its uh, uh, wide-ranging campaign uh, all across uh, Ukraine. Uh, additionally, we're also getting news that indicates uh, the uh, the Russian uh, uh, buildup continues uh, in terms of the amount of, of both personnel and forces that are being allocated to this ongoing offensive uh, by the uh, the Russian military into Ukraine. Uh, right now, uh, there is a estimated uh, two hundred thousand uh, Russian forces in the area of operation. Now that includes ground forces, which uh, actual ground forces inside of uh, Ukraine uh, right now we believe are uh, between 100 and 120,000 with an additional up to 100,000 support troops 
you know, Air Force personnel, Naval personnel, uh, all the, uh, the the needed assets that are outside of Ukraine, and those and again those number about two hundred and and twenty thousand personnel in total that have uh, been dedicated to the uh, the ongoing conflict. Now, with that being said, it does appear that the Russians are looking to commit an additional. 100,000 personnel to probably get the total force construct of Russian forces dedicated to operations specifically designed against Ukrainian forces uh, at about 300 to 330,000 personnel. Now, how many of those are going to be additional ground forces versus support forces? Uh, we don't know at this time. Uh, but uh, but but clearly, uh, the the Russians are preparing. Uh, for an extended campaign, and how long is that campaign going to go, and, and what are the uh, the current military objectives of Russian forces? Uh, very difficult to say at this point. We, we do know that the short-term objectives are the seizure, obviously, of several Donetsk, Lysychansk, Slovyansk, uh, Kramatorsk, uh, Bakhmut, and... Uh, uh, seizing uh, all territory in both uh, Luhansk and Donetsk uh, regions as well. Uh, we suspect that uh, the the Russians will also eventually uh, look uh, to move towards uh, Kharkov, quite possibly, uh, along with uh, uh, getting to uh, Zaporizhia. Now, with a with a with a uh, look to cross the uh, Dnieper River. Uh, once they hit Zaporizhia, probably not. I would suspect that they're going to look to roll up uh, territory in the eastern, on the eastern bank of the Dnieper River, and continue to hold its footprint on the uh, western bank as well, near Kherson and Mykolaiv. Now, obviously, there has been some talk about further moves eventually towards Odessa, uh, but at, at this point, I think that is uh, probably a ways off before that, uh, before that actually. Occurs. I think right now the Russians uh, want to continue its pressure campaign in hopes that eventually you see a general collapse, uh, as I've talked about before, of uh, the U U Ukrainian uh, forces in specifically uh, the far eastern part of the uh, Donbass. And uh, we'll have to see if that uh, actually occurs. But what we'll do now is kind of zoom in and give you an idea of what has happened over the last... Uh, uh, 24, 48 hours. And you can, again, as I've done this uh, uh, several times now where you, the viewer, can kind of see uh, what the Russians are doing. So we're back about three days, uh, June 13th roughly, and I'll, I'll, I'll fast forward it so you can see kind of this uh, broad frontal operation. And, and right now, again, all all uh, uh, designs right now appear to be uh, towards the Slovyansk. And I'll forward that here. And you can clearly see heavy fighting kind of in this area. You can see it, it was contested, and then uh, and then they're still uh, pressuring uh, towards uh, eventually the the M3 highway, and then kind of moving down uh, towards uh, Slovyansk. And these reports are uh, from these are namely uh, you. Ukrainian reports that uh, we're uh, we're seeing right now uh, in in this specific uh, uh, internet uh, map based uh, information from uh, from deep state and most of this information is again is from Ukrainian sources on the ground that report firsthand uh, kind of what is happening uh, supposedly it's pretty reliable. Uh, obviously there has been uh, some pushback from the uh, Russian side of the equation and especially in the comment section that indicates that uh, the, uh, the, the Russian forces um, are in fact uh, have obtained uh, greater gains than what is being uh, listed on this current map. And that's very well possible. Uh, we, we do know uh, the gains in, in around several Donetsk may be more than what is listed on this map. Uh, we know that uh, right now there are roughly 
uh, between 1,000 and 2,000 uh, Ukrainian uh, soldiers still on the eastern bank of the Donetsk River. This is the Donetsk River, and this is the eastern bank, and this is predominantly uh, several Donetsk. And uh, right now, uh, roughly 1,000 uh, to 2,000 Ukrainian personnel are, uh, are still in, in, on the eastern side attempting to uh, defend areas in and around uh, several of the So does that mean that those uh, troops are now trapped because uh, most of the bridges could be blown across uh, the, uh, the Donetsk River uh, via uh, Lysychansk from Severodonetsk? I would say no. Uh, the size of this river is is not very large and uh, given the weather it's 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 fairly warm a, a soldier for all intents and purposes could just swim or a group of soldiers could simply swim across uh, the river if they if they absolutely needed to so it's it's not something that uh, is uh, is, is something that uh, is, is trapping Ukrainian forces in this area. Now, obviously, heavy equipment uh, and stuff like that is, is probably going to, uh, going to have to remain on the eastern side of the Donetsk River, but uh, individual soldiers uh, would, would really have no issue uh, crossing uh, into uh, Ukrainian-held uh, areas if the uh, Russians uh, launch an all-out storming operation to seize control of of this entire area at some point, but still very, very difficult given the, the situation that's, uh, that's ongoing, and we continue to see uh, Russian operations near Popasna as well, kind of And uh, again, the, the red areas supposedly are, are what is in the control of Russian forces. Uh, this beige area here uh, is disputed. So it could very well be under uh, Russian control. It could possibly be under Ukrainian control. But in, in for th uh, this map, uh, it means it is, in fact, uh, disputed. But uh, that's where we stand today. We'll continue to to put out more information uh, as we get it. Again, continuing to watch things uh, very, very closely. Uh, again, thanks for uh, taking your time and joining us today. Have a good day.